everybody. Great to see you again. Welcome back to the, say it with me, joy of color, painting and soon to be drawing. I'm your host, Jubug Ross. Really appreciate you guys coming back. Episode three, wow, I wanted to do one of my suggestions, which was happy little clouds. Wow, someone um, had said, could you make these abstract, you know, so that we can all enjoy them at home. And uh, yes, this is something that can, you can definitely go abstract with. I love cotton candy clouds. They remind me of cotton candy ice cream, which I'm a big fan of. Reminds me of my childhood and uh, playing mini golf. Now you tell me your memories. Today we're drinking a Pinot Grigio. I do believe it is a white. I would like to thank you guys for giving me an excuse to drink out of my mini wine tasting glass on... What day is it? Times are tough, and I know that and you know that. But you know what? We're gonna get through this one day at a time. It's all you gotta do. Don't think about the rest. Okay, I won't. Woo! Feeling good! So I pulled up a reference photo. I just googled Cotton Candy Sky. And the colors we're gonna be mostly using today are basically just blue and pink. Um, I used a Schneebrenner blue light. And I'm gonna be mixing that with Permanent Rose, which is my favorite pink. A little bit of an old Holland color that I splurged on, which is Brilliant Rose. It's spelled Brilliant Rose, which I don't think is a typo. I do believe it is Dutch. And we're gonna be using a lot of white. Hope you guys enjoy. Sit back, relax, just get in, get your supplies. We're getting to work. You know what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna make sure I'm recording because it wouldn't be the first time this happened. Good news, I was recording. So we're gonna be using a lot of white. This is a pastel painting. Oh, I forgot to introduce my guests. Day 17 in quarantine. We have Vincent Van Gogh. We've got Starry Night. They do have a matching pair, but I couldn't find it. So what we're working with today is La Mona Lucia. See her? No, she never cracks a smile. Moving on. Right now I'm just mixing Chabonet Blue Light. Again, you can use a cerulean blue, you can use a phthalo blue, mix it with white, and we're creating a really cute, what am I saying? A very beautiful light blue. Put that on the page. Congratulations, you made your first step. Let's celebrate. The way life is going, it would be silly not to celebrate the small victories. Another. Is this legal? My blue is like looking kind of green, so I'm gonna add a little bit of, oh, I'm gonna add some ultramarine blue. So if you have ultramarine blue, I would mix that with white and that always creates a really, really pretty white blue. And I'm just gonna loosely abide by this reference image. Like I'm not gonna go crazy trying to make it the same. I'm not a perfectionist or anything. No, really I'm not, like, like I wish I were. Then I'd be better at my job. I'm gonna take a pretty big brush and use Brilliant Pink with some white. And this Brilliant Pink almost has like a peachy quality to it, which is nice because in here these, the brightest part of the pink that I see is a little bit peachy. What we're laying in now is going to be like the brightest part of our clouds. So just keep that in mind. So we're going to be blending into it so you can put a little bit of extra. And where it's needing the blue, just fluff it out. You know what I'm saying? Now we're going to take our really light blue mixed with white and I'm just going to expand it down. Right now it's feeling a little bit like a gender reveal and right now we need to bridge the gap between the pink and the blue and create a beautiful purple which will enhance our cotton candy feeling. Does anyone else speak with two llamas all the time? Let's focus on this one first. We want it to really be something wow. So right away when they meet we definitely feel some purple but we're going to want this to be even more blended. Wow. Creating gradients is so fun because you're literally just blending. And you want this, since this is like a pastel -y painting, we want it to feel soft, so we're really blending. If your brush that you're using is big and soft, then that, this will make it um, easier as well. Give dimension to this cloud. And the way we're gonna do that is by making these marks a little bit darker. But first, let's expand this up. Mm. Totally forgot to ask, how's everyone doing today? What's up? What's new? What's the 411? What's the hot goss? Okay, so now we're going to take our permanent rose, mix it with the ultramarine, mix it on your palette, 
and you get a really nice purple. But if we want things to look a little more realistic, instead of looking straight out of the tube, this is the color we have so far. This looks very straight out of the tube. What you can do is add an opposite color. So I'm going to add some green and I'm going to add some alizarin just to make it darker instead of keeping it bright. We're going to take this and put this in where the darkest part is, the darkest part of our cloud, which is going to give us that dimension. Using cloud-like movements, swirling it around and, and blending it into that pink. This is very purple, so I'm going to add some more pink. Oh, I got paint on me. You know what to do. I didn't make the rules. Yes, yes I did. So we're going to keep blending this. There's a little bit of pink up here. Again, we're using the reference photo here just as a rough guideline. And again, don't stress about it. So under here, the shadow under the cloud, I see a lot more blue. So I'm going to add some more blue. It's almost as if it's the blue peeking from behind. The blue sky is peeking through the cloud because the cloud is not com a complete solid. Almost like how my real skin peeks through my heavy caked on makeup at the end of a night of dancing. No, what was that you said? No one asked? You got it. So we're using this by, this little section here I'm loving. So we're going to keep trying to define these clouds so that the brightest pink, that first pink we put down, peeks out. And as for the blue that we're sort of losing here, we can always add more. Don't worry about it. Again, just taking your brush and like going every which way. As long as your clouds are happy. We're sort of getting a workout in, an arm workout, depending on how fast you're moving your brush. Wow, this is really speaking to me. Let's add some more blue because I feel like we're losing our blue. And again, the blue is mixed with a lot of white. And there, remember there was some breakthrough blue here. It's coming through. We have some up here too. So let's make sure we put that in. It's just a lot of blending. Can you smell the cotton candy? Because I can. What do we do? We blend, blend. And moving your brush crazy and fast is actually quite helpful. Because then you don't have time, really, to overthink it. And also, these cool marks are being made. They're not like, I didn't plan that. I didn't do it. it just sort of happens. Where your canvas is blank, connecting two places together. I mean, this looks pretty good. And we're doing it here. Wow. So there's some paint down here that I forgot to put in originally, so I'm going to take my brush and put some nice pink. Now we can use the pink that I just used and add some more clouds. Fill in the white so it looks like it's on top of that sky. The lighting keeps changing in here. So does my hair, apparently. My hair tie is hanging on for dear life, much like Joe Exotic's eyebrow ring, wouldn't you say? Make sure you use a big brush for a painting like this because or else you're just you're inconveniencing yourself. I would just like to pause here and say, like, I'm having fun right now, are you? This is really wonderful. An important thing to do is to squint, look at your reference, and see where you see dark. So this is supposed to be a little bit darker, so I'm going to mix in some ultramarine blue. We're going to add that right here towards the bottom, and we're going to blend upward. This gives the cloud some real dimension. And I see some darkness up here that we didn't really get before, so I'm just going to put that in. And blend that into the pink. And the pink that we put down first is really only in some spots, so we can blend into it to leave that little bit of pink to be really special. You know, if there's too much of it, then it's not special. But if you only get glimpses of it in the painting some places, you'll appreciate it more. That's like with life. I'm not sure like what I'm referring to with that metaphor, but you just sort of like fill in the blanks yourself, you know what I mean? Is anyone else like just feeling the vibe right now? Oh, I really am. So I want the fluffy part of the clouds to feel fluffy, feel pastel -y, almost blurred. There's an area here with some clouds that we didn't put in yet. And there's like little pieces breaking off. Our brightest pink. Yeah. And we're going to surround the pink with some of the dark so that it really comes out and is um, appreciated. And we're adding more clouds. Again, the clouds can be in any preference you want. With a reference photo like this, we're really just using it for guidance. You can put in clouds anywhere. You can try to form a little face. A lot of this is preference. So my goal for these paintings is 
that you're having fun while you're doing them, doing it with your friends, pain and sip, quarantine, becoming an artist, discovering this is not so hard, I can do it too, my art's beautiful, everyone's an artist. I forgot why. I completely lost my train of thought. God, I could really go on about that. Oh, no, I really lost it. Oh, my goal for this is that you keep this painting and you like it and you want to put it in your house, so it's really up to you for preferences and colors, and I want you to use colors that you think are happy and beautiful. My god, what a terrible teacher I am, only doing the paint part of the paint and sip. It's definitely a point. Now, an important thing to do when you're painting is to step back and look at your piece. So I'm just gonna go look at it. When I took a trip to the other side of the room, some things I noticed. The pink that I love so much, is, there is a little too much, so it's not popping out as much as I'd like it to. And also this blue up here is a little too light. And I'm going to use uh, Ultramarine, which I said is like an amazing blue. I'm going to mix it with Chamonix Blue Light. Yeah, look at that. And we're going to just sort of cut in here and form those shapes, like those rounded edges. See, that helps already. I'm loving it. While I have this blue on my brush, I'm going to put some in here. Darken this blue, these areas. What you know about me? What you, what you know about me? Oh shit, I forgot about the camera having such a good time. And basically this one big cloud right here, we can model every little cloud after it. Even the clouds at the bottom that are very dark, they all have, the darkest part of them is at the bottom and it's blue. Like I said, I'm getting this content in before these lashes are gone because when they're gone, baby, I'm gone. Just kidding. Lashes aren't everything. I would say this is really fun. I don't often paint clouds. However, the one time I did paint clouds that are the exact same color, you can see it right now. It's right there. I did not plan this. I set up my little setup to bring color into the room uh, and into the frame. I had this brush in blue. And you know, it's very unforgiving. Like your favorite pair of jeans after you've been quarantined with your snacks for so long. I'm going to blend in here a little bit to really leave. Like I said, I want that pink to be very rare because I want it to be like standing out. See, that already helps a little bit. You see it there and I see a lot of it here, so I'm just gonna go in and make that a little bit less. So much of this painting requires no new paint on your brush. You're just moving paint around the canvas. That's nice. Now you'll notice I'm not really giving a lot of direction. That's because a lot of this is just playing and blending. If you're frustrated and you feel like your clouds aren't happy, then just take a sip and then Reevaluate. And whenever you feel like you're done, you did it. How's my hair tie? Oh my god. And I'm gonna mix a little bit of the permanent rose in with the brilliant pink that I see down here, right here, that's like really pink. Oh, that's nice. We can blend. I'm just laying color in. Keep in mind these are clouds, so keep your brush strokes organic, soft, feathery, light. And you know, maybe don't wear flare sleeves while you're working with oil paint. Just a suggestion. I stepped back one more time and I've determined that we're done. And you know what, I think Starry Night and Mona Lisa would agree. I think with a painting like this, where we put, we put in the brightest pink, we put in the brightest blue, and then we just blend everything together, everything else is just a blending game, adding darks, adding lights. Um, it's really easy to overdo it. Like, it's really easy to over blend so that you end up with just a pile of mush and it's not cotton candy anymore, it's dissolved on the ground because you dropped it at the carnival and it dissolved into a puddle. When you're painting and it starts to feel like, hmm, what else can I do? You're going over the same area more than once and you feel like you might be ruining it. You probably are. It's with you. So just walk away. You did a great job and it looks beautiful. I'm feeling good about it. What do you guys feel? Thank you guys for tuning into episode three. I can't wait for episode four. Leave me your suggestions. Tell me what's going on how you're feeling, what you're making, tag me, Jew bug, three U's, four total, three in the Jew, one in the bug. God, I need to find a way to shorten that. And I hope you guys, as always, are staying safe, staying happy, healthy, sane, feeling good. This is temporary, we're gonna get through it, and we're gonna learn art in the process. My videos are coming. Please like, comment, subscribe if my chair just squeaked so much that I'm gonna redo that. Please like, comment, subscribe, give me your feedback. I really appreciate the support you guys mean more than you know. It's keeping me going. I'm gonna keep recording until I have only one lash left. Stay safe. Thank you so much for watching.